Hello everyone, here's Arkady. Welcome to my technology channel. Happy to see you again back here. And first of all, I would like to thank you all for your comments, for your support, for your feedback, what I have received. I'm trying now to develop my channel and I came up to idea to start a couple of interviews with experts in different fields of surface engineering. This will be also shortly announced on my channel on LinkedIn and also on YouTube. So let's stay in touch and let's meet soon first of experts introducing you some of sneak peeks to one of exciting surface engineering technologies. Today's video, I would like to introduce you a very basics about surface engineering, just to give you a feeling why it's important, where it's coming from, and what you can learn with it, and why are some technologies used to improve certain properties. Actually, if you think about our world, we every day interact with certain surfaces. There is always some contacts between bodies. If you drive a car, you have brake pads interacting with brake But if you look on these deeper details, actually the interaction happens always between the surface of one material with the surface of another material. And even with the best foolishing of a surface, you, you can realize that your surface never looks as a straight line. It always has some roughness. And if we talk about roughness, this roughness might influence properties of your material. So let's take a look deeper decide. So what can happen with your surface? First of all, the main contact you have, it's a friction between two surfaces interacting with the other, which might result in a wear. I will have a separate video showing you a lot of uh, information about different wear models and how you can fight with them, what properties do you require. But surface engineering is one of the main uh, methods of importance, how you can improve the lifetime of your components and also, let's say, decrease the wear. Another property which is important about the surface is adhesion. There are some particles which interact with the surface may adhere to it, changing the surface properties. And opposite, if you put a coating, there might be not enough adhesion and during exploitation, your coating can just fall, fall out. Another important property of a surface is thermal properties. If it's a thermal conductivity, for example, which is important in many fields of uh, applications, even automotive, you also sometimes require electrical properties. If there is an isolation on the surface, an opposite where you really need to transfer the current through the surface in a defined direction. Environment. If we talk about environment, one of the main problems you can get, especially at elevated temperatures, is oxidation. Reaction with oxygen where some oxides might form on the surface, changing the properties. Or on opposite, it might be corrosion. And uh, sometimes we do also require support and tolerances where you produce the part and you realize that you're outside the tolerances. In this case, you might need to change the surface and uh, you might need to add additional material on opposite to remove certain material. Last not the least, uh, decorative properties. If you think about luxury generally, how commonly we have jewelry with certain painting coatings on top, uh, gold painting or other things, which still gives you a fancy color, but at the same time it can help you to reduce a lot of costs compared if you would produce this from the whole material. So answer this question, how I can change, protect, modify my surface. There are three ways, or let's say three main ways uh, that definitely more technologies which can help you, but it's just to give you an overview and put some directions. So with the yellow color models, we have a technology which um, simply by the fact that you realize that you probably need to change your production method, where you, if you produce material with certain surface roughness or certain properties, and it's not enough, maybe you have to go from casting to powder metallurgy or to do even additive manufacturing of part, or you have to change your material because material has not enough properties. The disadvantage here will be that you have to start from scratch again and you have to produce a full part which might be very expensive from a new material which might be even more expensive and that's why the surface technologies occurred in the market which can help you to minimize the cost and change the properties only interacting with the surface of material. So we have two directions where we can split it. From one side, it's a surface modification by changing the surface properties without 
any addition of a new material. So it might be that you can harden the surface, change the hardness, you can alloy the surface, changing the properties in terms like roughness, mechanical properties, corrosion resistance, or the opposite, you can nitride the surface. So basically, these are three main directions what you can do. Uh, then a bunch of technologies used for that. Um, most important here is to mention that don't add an extra material to your surface. So you probably mainly interact with the surface in depth. In opposite, if we speak about coating technologies, which might be film films, thick coating, thermal spraying, hard facing or laser cladding, in that case, you add a filler material to the surface of your initial product. So basically, you maintain the same product you had, but you add a material which might or will definitely have another properties to increase your oxidation resistance, to increase your corrosion resistance, wear resistance, or you adjust tolerances. So basically, if we look on that more detailed and to going back to those surface mechanisms which we studied with you before, we can split technologies of in two directions. One of them surface modification with the nitronic and lowing, and as I mentioned before, you interact with the surface in a depth. And if we go and build coatings, you can see three main directions on the market, uh, which are established for many of those changes, properties changing. Technologies for coat coatings can be splitted in directions of their thickness into substrates. So that's why you have film films with all PVD, plasma vapor deposition or chemical vapor deposition technologies. I will definitely invite an expert on that topic to give you more highlights about this. Uh, most important, you see, we interact in dimensions which are below a human hair size, which is between 60 to 80 microns. And you put coatings on top, which are around 50 micron max, and they also go to sub micro scale directions, being already 100 nanometers in in height on the thickness. So another technology group I would say is related to thermal spray processes, and in this case, um, you actually do interact with the surface also, but it's a cold process. In which time the cold process, you keep the substrate cold, you just accelerate certain particles uh, to the surface and you can produce uh, coatings with desired properties to improve your wear resistance, corrosion resistance, and any other required surface mechanisms. Those coatings typically start to be from 20 microns and go in direction up to almost 10 millimeters if we talk about arc spray processes, but mostly if we talk about thermal spray processes, we are in between the range of 100 to 250 microns. And the last group might be related to all the technologies which I would call hard facing by welding, which might be micmac welding, PTA, plasma transfer art hard facing, or now nowadays a laser cladding, which again with help of technologies development can give you a possibility to cover the parts starting already from 100 microns or even below and going to directions building parts uh, in special in hard facing by welding to almost 50 even more millimeters if it's a repair or surface properties changing mechanism the difference between hard facing and thermal spray is primary in the in the in the way that you have a hot process in terms of hard facing. That means you interact with your substrate, you produce dilution, you also change the properties below the surface by production of heat affected zone. And if you know what, um, you can always uh, find the right approach to protect your surface. I hope it was interesting for you and to get this basic understanding of what surface technologies mean. We will definitely look deeper inside in PVD, night riding, chemical vapor deposition, laser cladding, and also PTA. I'm really looking forward to invite a couple of experts to have some first phase opinions and uh, first phase highlights about these technologies. I'm very excited and I wish everybody a good starting time for before the Christmas. And let's keep in touch. Always yours, Arkady. Bye bye.